Rappahannock Beekeepers Association, RBA for short. It is a tri-county association. So people from Orange, Stafford, King George, Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania, they all come together into our association. So we're trying to fit a good group in so that people have coverage. And uh, we're like, I think we're 20? Actually, I should be looking at my shirt. We're 20 years old. Okay. So, and it was started by a group of ladies who really liked beekeeping and they wanted to know and they were teachers and they wanted to know about beekeeping and they wanted to understand beekeeping and they wanted to help each other. And then it grew from there. I think it grew from 10 people. And then over the time we've gone to like 50, we're at I think 98 now. And you know, it ebbs and flows because people move and coming out of the area yeah. and stuff. So is it is it tough to keep bees? How difficult is it? Oh, so beekeeping, it is not a hobby for the reary because it is, um, the initial cost is expensive. You have to make sure that you're willing to get stung. Because it's not a matter of will I get stung, it's <laughs> when I get stung. And if you're allergic, there's ways that you can make sure that you can keep bees if you're allergic. But you want to make sure you, what is it called? You want to make sure you weigh your options, right? The wooden wear, that is what the bees live in. It's the hive. And that can be expensive. So your startup costs are a lot. To keep bees, I don't know if it's that difficult if you really like bees. But during the winter, bees can abscond or die off, which means next year you have to start with a whole new hive. And then that can be costly. Okay. So I think it can be difficult, but it's a whole lot of fun. So you talk about costly, kind of, you know, like a ballpark. Mm -hmm. What does it usually cost? Uh, so the wooden ware for your hive is about $400. And that is, again, where they live. There's yeah. frames inside of it. We'll see the frames a little bit when we're talking about the inspection. And the bees themselves, if you go with a package, a package can be $130. It's about 3,000 to 5,000 bees. And it is just a box of bees with a queen bee that you would put into your woodenware or yeah. your hive. And then you grow it out like throughout your first season. And that first season is where the bees, they fill the frames First, they have to build out the frames, so they have the comb to put their produce in, the honey that they make, the nectar they bring in, and the pollen they bring in. But they have to build their homes first, so they have to build the frames first with the wax. And that takes a lot of time for the bees to do. We, sure, we feed them sugar water so they can build out their frames. And then if you start with a nuke, a nuke is different. It comes with a six frames that are already built out. It's going to have like 10 eight to ten thousand bees and those bees right there they're actually almost now a small new hive so they have some frames already built out so the queen can start laying immediately when she gets released as far as where you you set up hives is, uh, is there a kind of a general area where you need to set them up so if you read the books they tell you to have it east facing and in a sunny area and here's another fun thing. If you talk to 10 beekeepers, you're going to get 10 answers, <laughs> maybe 15 answers, because they're going based on what happens in their area. Sure. So for me, I look for an area that has some shade, does have sun. So you want trees. Sure. You, you want flowering shrubs. You want the, the fruit trees. You want anything that's going to give them the nectar or the honey. It's not honey. They make honey. Anything that makes the nectar or the pollen that they have. And then um, you do want them to have sun. The sunnier the spot, hotter it's gonna be for the bees, it's gonna be harder for you to work, but you will have less small hive beetles. So the trade-off is if you're in the shade, you're gonna be more comfortable when you work with the bees. The bees will probably be a little bit more comfortable in some of the temperatures, but you could have more diseases and insects other than the bees themselves, like small hive beetles. You also have to be worried about varroa mites. You have to be worried about ants. So there are certain things that depending on where you want to put your hive, you have to think about. And I guess you have to, you want the hive, is it, the hive generally have, should be away from people? So in essence, if you want the hive not to be disturbed, it should be away from people. Okay. But 
in this area, downtown Greens, it's on a little hill. People can walk up and around it, but you want to stay five to ten feet away from it just so the bees can move in and out. And in case you, you're allergic or you don't want to be stung by a bee. Like, so if you're in an HOA and they say you can't have hives, be mindful of that. Yeah. If you're in Fredericksburg and they say, oh, you can have two on your plot of land, but it has to be this distance from your property line, be mindful of that. Bees are not going to attack you or hurt you unless they, you are doing something to them or they perceive you as a threat. So if I was standing here and bees were flying around, I just wouldn't move because like they're not, they're not coming after you. They're just trying to protect their area. So if we stood in front of a hive, the bees are going to go past and, and around you because they're doing their flight patterns. They're, but they're not going to hurt you. What got you involved in this? Because you know a lot. <laughs> what got me involved is when I was a kid, I lived in Spotsylvania, still do today. I could not walk outside. I could not walk outside without like watching where I was stepping because you'd get stung by a bee. And then I live in the same area and I realized there's no bees. And then I started doing research and I'm like, I don't see butterflies that much anymore. So I didn't have the pollen coming in and my garden was doing it wasn't doing as well and I'm like I don't do honeybees for honey I do honeybees for the the environment I want to make sure that I see the butterflies I want to see the other other nature bees natural bees that are for Virginia coming back and I don't want to make sure that my fruit trees get po um, pollinated so that's why I do bees I've been doing bees about six years still learning Every day, I still learn. We have people that have been doing bees for 20 years, and they said, hey, I just learned this thing. Huh. So it is wonderful watching nature, and bees are amazing. There's three types of bees. One's the queen bee. There's only one in a hive. She lays all the eggs. And then you have the drone bees, and they're the male bees, and they're responsible to let the queen get bred so she can make the bees, and then the rest are worker bees and they're female bees and they do everything else they do they the nurse bees they're the cleaning bees they're the security they're the undertakers they're the ones who go out and get po pollen and nectar and bring it back they're the ones that you will see out of the hive nine times out of ten interesting fact about a drone bee they don't have a stinger so like if you come to earth day we usually have drone bees that you can pet they're walking around our arms and our legs. They're not really? legs, but they're walking around our arms and you can pet them. And then we feed them a little sugar water. And then if they fly off, then they fly off. 